Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is I, Sierra Daredevil, back with another episode in our TNA series in TW9. We are just a couple days away from Destination X, and uh, we're going to have to continue to see how that pay-per-view is shaping up. Um, as of right now, we have only two matches announced for the card. Uh, that would be Bad Influence getting a rematch, or having a rematch, that is, with Kurt Angle and Charles Betts, as well as, um, wow, I'm completely spaced on the set, on the other match. Oh, the Briscoes and the American Wolves fighting each other for a shot at the TNA World Tag Team titles. Uh, so those are the only two matches we have announced for the show as of right now. But we're going to see what else happens. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of matches like pre-announced ahead of time for the pay-per-view because uh, a good portion of the pay-per-view will be dedicated to Bound for Glory matches as well. So it's going to be kind of, you know, that's kind of the the hype for the pay-per-view is, is you get those two matches. And then you're also getting Bound for Glory matches that will be announced on the show. Or not on the show, but like, you know, the day before on social media kind of thing. Like it'll be announced like, you know, shortly, like, of you know. We're not announcing them too far ahead of time, but, you know, they are bound for glory matches, so of course you're going to expect some good stuff there. But in front of 7,865 people at the Kellogg Arena in, in Michigan, we have Austin Aries opening up Impact tonight to an 81 rated segment, which is a really good way to start off the show. He says he likes to talk face to face with Robert Roode, but apparently Roode isn't here tonight. Something about some sort of rich person vacation he's on or something like that. He doesn't know. But he says it's fitting that someone like Rude would be a coward like that, pretending he's on vacation. But now Aries knows that he's really not here because he is worried. Rude talks a big game, but when it comes down to it, Rude is scared of Austin Aries. Supposedly, after talking with Daredevil backstage, Rude is too worried to show up for a match this Sunday. So Aries says, all right. If I can't fight Robert Roode this Sunday at, at Destination X, I will issue an open challenge for the pay-per-view instead. Uh, so he says he looks forward to seeing who steps up to the challenge. So, open challenge for Austin Aries at Destination X. We will have to see who steps up and accepts that challenge. And if Robert Roode truly is on some sort of vacation and isn't there on Sunday. Then we open up with a Battle of Glory matchup. It's 65 rating. Good stuff there. As April Mendez defeats Rosemary in 1127 by pinfall of the Shining Wizard. Uh, kind of a little bit of a hype with this matchup because these two, or this match, featured two people who won both of their matches previously in the Bound for Glory series so far. Um, so we expected it to be a good matchup, and it turned out to be a good one with 65 rating. Um, April Mendez is able to get the victory. Rosemary finally suffering her first loss in the Bound for Glory series. Um, but, you know, she's still right there. She's still, you know, she's still got six points right now. Um, we'll have to see if if uh, a lot of other people end up kind of getting any sort of advantage there. But April Mendez secures her third victory in the series, gets herself um, up to nine points at this point, and, you know, kind of puts herself in the lead, really, when it comes at this point. Well, yeah, good matchup here between these two. As April Mendez is is uh, really kind of proven that she's gonna, you know, could, that was kind of the whole idea. Um, when coming here, we haven't really heard much about from her yet, but that was kind of her whole thing when coming here is she wanted to work her way through the roster to prove that she uh, could be a star here in TNA, and she's just kind of doing it with the Bound for Glory series so far. And then after that, we go to another Mount Glory Series match. This one gets a 70 rating as Roderick Strong defeats Punishment Martinez in 1226 by pinfall to Gibson Driver. Um, so Strong getting himself three more points in the Mount for Glory Series. Martinez putting up a good effort, but not quite on the level of Roderick Strong. These two have great chemistry with each other, so that's good to see. But 70 rating here, good stuff there. As Strong picks up the victory, gets himself some more points, and we'll have to see what happens there. Let me go backstage. Marie Cadell is backstage talking to someone. This guy's got a 66 rating. Wow. Especially with no storyline uh, attached or anything like that. Marie Cadell is backstage talking with someone. It's one of those, like, you know, 
random backstage worker kind of people. When the TNA Knockouts Champion Velvet Sky walks up to her with Angelina Love and Toe, of course. Velvet and Angelina kind of mock Maria for the lackluster job she's done as an authority figure here in TNA. She kind of, you know, it's like, I'm sitting here, you know, um, you know, like nobody's really cared about, about, uh, if it wasn't for me, nobody would be caring about the Knockouts division because you just kind of haven't really done much job with it. You kind of drop the ball with it. She's just kind of mocking Maria. And she even kind of mocks Maria and Daredevil for there being no title matches announced for Destination X just a couple days away from the show happening. Of course, like I said, outside of the Bound for Glory series matches, the only matches that have been announced are those two tag matches, both of them non-title. Maria says, you know what? That's It must be fate calling out because I was actually looking for you. I wanted to let you know that you're defending your Knockouts Championship this Sunday, actually. Velvet gets annoyed, and she's like, all right, who is my opponent then? Maria just kind of smiles at her and says, of course, it's, well, it's probably better that you don't know. Maria then walks off as Velvet and Angelina look annoyed by what just happened. So, we have a Knockouts title matchup happening this Sunday at Destination X. Velvet Sky will be defending her championship against someone. Against an opponent to be named, apparently. Um, Velvet Sky, you know, in the middle of this very dominant reign. She won the title at Bound for Glory last year. Um, so she's been a champion for about nine months now. She's had ten successful defenses of the title. I think it was ten, yeah. Um, so, I mean, she's been she's been dominant, but uh, who's going to step up to face her? I mean, you know, it's uh, it'll be interesting, especially because so many... Uh, Knockouts are currently involved in the Bound for Glory series. Um, she just defeated Gail Kim at Slammiversary, so it'd be kind of weird for Gail to get a rematch. Uh, and Gail's friend Serena Deeb is in Bound for Glory series, so it can't be her. So, I mean, there's, you know, not really a whole lot of, of uh, knockouts on the roster at that point. Once you take out Bound for Glory series ones and ones that Velvet has has, uh, you know, defeated recently and all that, you kind of, uh, kind of find yourself at a little bit of a loss as to who it could be. I will tell you right now, slightly breaking the fourth wall, uh, it is not somebody from outside the company. Um, I don't have another surprise, like, I don't have another, like, recent signee lined up, so it is somebody from within the company. But 66 rating here, pretty good, uh, backstage segment here. Then, we go from the beautiful people to the machine guns. As they come out to the ring, it's got a 66 as well. It's kind of interesting. Um, Saban mockingly puts over the tag match this Sunday between the Briscoes and the Wolves. Saying it's two teams who think they're the best but couldn't be farther from. Shelly kind of says that he feels it'd be a tougher challenge taking on, I don't know, the Von Erics or, or the Bravados or or some some other team like that. You know, calling out a couple of like lower kind of jobber teams here in TNA. Um Kind of just putting down the fact that the Wolves and the Briscoes are laughable jokes who they'll defeat with ease. This brings out the Briscoes. With Jay getting on the mic and saying that the Guns really want to prove that the Briscoes are a joke, they can come to the ring right now and prove themselves. As the Briscoes head down in the ring, uh, the Guns end up leaving the ring. And they're like, yeah, we we, we would, but we, we, well, to be honest, we really don't want to waste our time on you two tonight. But in their time, in their, uh, their moment of being distracted by the Briscoes coming down to the ring. They aren't paying attention to the fact that two men just jumped the barricade and are standing behind them, none other than David Richards and Eddie Edwards, the Wolves. Ends up in, with a four-on-two brawl happening. The guns getting kind of beaten down by both teams um, before the guns are able to run off. They're able to kind of escape somehow. Uh, but they don't have their tag titles. They, can, you know, It's one of those things that they run up the ramp and they realize that their tag titles are still in the ring. Um, and the Wolves, both a member of the Wolves and a member of the Briscoes grab a tag title each and then kind of have a stare down between both of them. It's kind of teasing, you know, hey, we, uh, we both might hate the guns, but we have to face each other this Sunday for a shot at the tag titles that we hold in our hands right now kind of thing. So 66 rating there as kind of a way to really hype up the, the match happening this Sunday. 
Then we get 69 rated matchup. Nice rating. As the strong South Thugs defeat Uha Nation and Juice Robinson in 631. When Kingston pinned Robinson with Backfist of the Future. Um, yeah, this is kind of a wild brawl setup. Uh, we don't really know why it happened. Other than the fact that I have to have a wild brawl in every show. <laughs> but we don't really know why it happened. We just know that it did happen. Um, we got a 69 rating as the as Kingston and Homicide get the victory here. Uh, Nation Robinson looking okay in it, though. Afterwards... Kingston and Homicide win their matchup, but they immediately get jumped by Samoa Joe and Magnus. Of course, last week, we saw Magnus uh, end up in a bit of a beatdown situation until Samoa Joe made the surprise uh, of coming out to the ring and helping him out. Uh, now the two men seem to be working together as they beat down Kingston and Homicide here. Uh, Kingston and Homicide get run off as Magnus grabs the microphone and tells him to tell their boys, MVP and Sheldon Benjamin, that they... that. Uh, Magnus talked to Daredevil, and that he will that these two will see those two this Sunday at Destination X. So it is official. Uh, it is going to be MVP and Sheldon Benjamin teaming up to take on Magnus and Samoa Joe at Destination X, which should be very interesting for, to say the least. We'll go backstage. I figured it wasn't going to do that hot, but that's fine. Uh, we bring in, Chrissy Hemi brings in the tag team, the knockout tag team champions that are, uh, the Lucha Sisters. She kind of asks them how it feels to be the champions, and they talk about the struggles they've had here in TNA, kind of a lot of losses, and a lot of times they've come up short. But, they were able to defeat a dominant team in cheerleading Melissa and Kana, um, as well as the, the Shirais as well. Uh, and say that they're sure that, that Melissa and Kana will be coming after them again in the future, but, and, but they are ready for them, just like they're ready for any team to step up and challenge them for the titles. Anytime, anywhere, they will be ready. So just kind of a little bit of a, you know, hey, we want to build up the, the Lucha Sisters a little bit because they are Knockouts Tag Champions. Uh, I don't plan on there being a Knockouts Tag Title matchup at the pay-per-view. They might be in a non-title match in the pre-show, though. I haven't decided for sure if I want to do that match yet or not. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's the thing about, especially with the Knockouts Tag Titles, but just uh, some of the titles in general. The thing about um, having a lot of title matches during this time is because so many people are wrapped up in the Bound for Glory series that it would either be repeating a lot of recent title, title matches that would be happening or um, it would be, you know, kind of out of nowhere title matches happening. So, um, but I do have some plans for it. And so we're kind of trying to build up the Lucha Sisters a little bit because they, uh, they could use a little bit of popularity. So 44 radio segment, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Wow, this struggled. Huh. Sure, Melissa was really off her game, which sucks, but nevertheless, Sure, Melissa defeats Mio Shirai in the Bound for Glory series in 11 15 by pinfall of an air raid crash. 56 rating for the match. I mean, it didn't really suck, but it's just a, I expected it to be better. Uh, Melissa with a 49, she was really off her game, 47 from Mio. Um, so I believe that. Brings Melissa up to two wins now, because the the this match was between two people who have only had one match in the Bound for Glory series so far, if I remember right. Um, so Melissa gets the victory, and now she's actually defeated both, if I remember right. She's actually defeated both uh, Shirai's in back to back matches. So I think her only other match so far in the BFG was the was against Io. Um, I could be wrong about that though. I know I booked uh, a match with. Two people who only had one match so far in the Bound for Glory series, but I can't remember if it was this one or one on Explosion. Nevertheless, Melissa picking up the victory, getting herself three more points in the Bound for Glory series. 56 rating. I mean, it's still a pretty good match, but I was just hoping for a little bit better, but I'll take it. I will take it. Then we go to a 64 rated matchup in the Bound for Glory series, which, what the hell happened here? Why is it only 64? Is it lack of storyline? How is that a lack of a storyline? They should both be... Alright. Oh, that's right. Wait, now I'm even more confused. Okay. The game kind of borked on me here a little bit. So I still have the 
Cole Cabana is not in the Bound for Glory series storyline because he's still in a storyline with Jimmy Jacobs and, you know, Abyss and all that. But, Jimmy Jacobs should be at ringside. Because the idea is that Jimmy Jacobs came out during the matchup and was watching it. He joined the commentary table, which I was just about to explain. So, why did it not advance that storyline? Whatever. Nevertheless, got a 64 rating as uh, Coke Bandit defeats D'Angelo De Niro in 1251 by submission with the Invert of Boston Crab or the Billy Goes Curse uh, to get himself three points in the Battle for Glory series. Um, looking impressive in the victory here. Afterwards, though, he does notice Jimmy Jacobs there at the commentary table and immediately heads out after him. The two start brawling at ringside to a big roar from the crowd. However, Jimmy Jacobs had backup in the wings as Abyss and Crazy Steve show up. And the three, uh, it's a three-on-one beatdown that obviously Cabana can't necessarily win. Um, so he ends up getting laid out. Jimmy Jacobs gets a microphone, says that Colt's efforts are a waste. Because Jacobs sees the truth, he speaks the truth, and he will make everyone else experience the truth as well. Colt may be hiding in the Mount for Glory series right now. But when the time comes... Jacob will help Cabana awaken to the truth. The K pose to booze before leaving the ring together as officials check on Cole Cabana. 59 rating brought the storyline down, the uh, heat down a little bit, but that's fine. Um, I put Crazy Steven here because it felt weird if I didn't. I didn't really want to do like, oh, it's just Jimmy Jacobs and Abyss doing everything when Crazy Steve is a part of the, the K as well. And I'm trying to build, you know, I'm trying to get him built up a little bit, so... Put him in here, even if we brought down the storyline or the segment a little bit, but that's fine. Um, the point is, Jacobs clearly still having the advantage, wanting to get his hands on his former tag team champion or tag yeah tag team champion partner in Cole Cabana, um, but uh, recognizes that he may have to wait a little bit for that while the Bound for Glory series is happening. So fifty nine rating here for this, it's fine. We'll get the the heat back, no worries. We go backstage, 75 rating, as Magnus and Joe are walking together backstage when they come across AJ Styles. So that's kind of the question Joe for to choosing to work with Magnus after everything he's done for the past year or so. Magnus kind of steps up, preventing Joe from saying anything, and says that's exactly why Joe is working with him now. Because Joe's had to hit, suffer at the hands of the BDC for months now, because he didn't have people watching his back. In fact, one could make the same argument for AJ Styles. He lost his anniversary because he didn't have people watching his back. Even though I think he did, but whatever. Magnus is saying what he wants, I guess. So he says maybe maybe AJ needs to get off his high horse and realize that the BDC are going to continue to run this place until a group of people to get together to stop him. AJ kind of has a little bit of a staring moment with Magnus before turning to Joe and saying, yeah, good luck with that before walking off. So kind of teasing that maybe AJ should be helping out Magnus and Joe against the BDC. But we'll have to see if that ends up happening. 75 rating here. As, uh, yeah, kind of helping hype up the tag match this Sunday. You know, helping hype up, you know, where AJ Styles is right now. Uh, he lost the mat the world title match at Slammiversary, and he hasn't really done much since then. Um, because it's kind of, I don't know. We're not sure exactly what's going on through AJ's head, but he's not happy about Joe uh, working with Magnus, that's for sure. Another main event to hype up the mat, the tag match this Sunday. Sees Christopher Daniels actually pull off a victory over Kurt Angle in 1557 by pinfall of an Angel's Wings. 78 rating for the match. 76 from Kurt. 70 from Daniels. Uh, I'm guessing Kurt just got penalized because of his physical condition, yeah. Kurt's kind of borked at this point when it comes to his physical condition. The game is, uh, the, the new game, TW9, of course, is making it clear that Kurt is uh, definitely on the downhill slope at this point. Because, you know, he went from having 80-some performances in TW 2020 to just a, a month or so later in the new game, all of a sudden doing upper 70s. So, I mean, he's still, I think he still kind of pops, pops a, an 80 here and there. But, yeah, it's... Uh, it's kind of clear that physical condition really does affect it, the in-ring performances in this game. But I'll still take a 78 for the main event as Daniels picks up a surprise victory over Kurt Angle. 
um, in a very highly competitive matchup, kind of hyping up the match this Sunday. And then to end the show, ooh, got a 56, oof. That's not good. As uh, Daniels quickly leaves the ring, a big smile on his face, as Kurt kind of upset about the loss, he's like, man, I, you know, kind of upset about the fact that he lost this matchup. Kazarian comes out to join Daniels, and the two kind of mock Angle and Charles Betts as commentators talk about the match this Sunday to end the show. Um, I don't know. It's an awful gimmick. So it really was just their, you know, their entertainment skills, I guess, I, I, they're rated on. It might be because of the fact that Betts and Kazarian were rated on entertainment skills of this as well. They weren't talking, but there was still kind of like charisma stuff. And both of them do not have that good of charisma, so might have hurt it a little bit, but that's fine. I'll take it. Impact gets 78 this week. Increase our popularity in seven regions. I will take that as well. So there you go. We have uh, 140,000 we made from the show. We went up a point in Manitoba, in Kansai, and in Central Europe, as well as part of a point in New Zealand, Kanto, Shubu, and Kyushu. So good stuff there. Um, but yeah, so we have a couple more matches added to the card happening in game this Sunday. We have Velvet Sky defending her knockouts championship against an opponent to be named. We have Austin Aries with an open challenge, and we have that big tag match, which will probably be the main event of the show, which will be Magnus and Samoa Joe taking on MVP and Shelton Benjamin. Oh. <laughs> WWE have donated $250,000 to charity, apparently. So there's that. <laughs> um, ratings 1.5 million uh, almost 1.6 million people watching Impact this week NXT had a 54 uh, with Becky Lynch defeating Sasha Banks in the tables match in the main event interesting um, FIP actually jumped up to third so either ROH dropped a TV deal or FIP gained a TV deal they're now on syndication, so that'll help them out, yeah, because I think if I remember right, I was always kind of questioning why FIP wasn't, why FIP was only on the box, which was in New Zealand, so them being on syndication is definitely going to help them out, but I saw Bobby Lashley and AR Fox defeat Dominance, which is Jesse Goddard's and Spud, you know what, <laughs> when I think of Dominance, I think of Jesse Goddard's and Rockstar Spud, <laughs> Oh, boy. That's funny. Um, also, Timothy Thatcher and Sam Shaw are the FIP World Tag Team Champs in this. That's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting indeed there. Uh, ROH, Scott Steiner, Bully Ray defeated Delirious and Tommaso Ciampa in the main. And there you go. There's that. Uh, let's see... Booker T is now a locker room leader in, in WWE. Interesting. Bully Ray had an argument with, with the owner of ROH. Of course. Cedric Alexander and Hangman have an argument backstage. Jay Bronson and Sheldon Goldberg. Sheldon Goldberg, I think, in-game is, in this mod, is the owner. Uh, the quote-unquote owner of NXT. Uh, so there's that. But yeah. Uh, explosion. That happened this week as well. We gotta take a look at that, because, of course, we had a couple more Bound for Glory series matches happen on the show. Um, but we'll run th things really quick here. We had Brooke Tessmacher defeat Havoc. Uh, Red Dragon defeated the All Night Express. Santana Garrett defeated local talent Priscilla Kelly. Um, Priscilla Kelly not signed at this point. Priscilla Kelly only had 23 which isn't much better than Santana, or, or much worse than Santana Garrett, but I haven't signed her yet. She's like 18, yeah, she's 18 years old, she's a rookie, like she's, her skills are, are going to need a little bit of work, but, you know, we'll keep her in mind for stuff. Um, Jimmy Jacobs defeated Mike Bennett, and then our two Bound for Glory series matches. We had our first draw in the Bound for Glory series, 
uh, because apparently Carrie Hojo and Angelina Love went to a double disqualification. I, I don't know how that happened, um, but they went to a double DQ, so they both only get one point apiece. And then in the main event of Explosion, Adam Cole defeated Zima Ion to get three points in the Battle for Glory series himself. So that does leave us where... I keep forgetting I don't have the button down there for it. Let me do that really quick. There is, I mean, there's not really anything spoiler-wise on the main screen, but still. Um, so, if we flip over, after this set of Impact Slash Explosion that happened, we have one person standing on top of the Knockouts Bound for Glory series right now. That is April Mendez with nine points. Cheerleader Melissa and Rosemary both at six points apiece in second. Uh, but, of course... Uh, <clears throat> Rosemary did lose to Mendez. Uh, Melissa, yeah, I, I was right on that on that matchup. So Melissa had her second matchup, and she's still undefeated in the Battle for Glory series. So at some point, we may be seeing Melissa versus Mendez in, in a, kind of an undefeated setup. Not sure when that would happen, but we'll see. Kana, Deeb, <clears throat> Mio Shirai, and Ikara Shida all with three points apiece. Angelina Love and Kairi Hojo, thanks to that draw that they had on Explosion, both with one point, and Io Shirai, still the only one without a point in the series so far. Um, it is kind of funny that Angelina Love and Kairi Hojo, who lost their only other two matches in the series so far, fought each other and went to a draw. On the men's side, right now in the lead is Roderick Strong, nine points in his three matches so far. Cole Cabana, Jay Lethal, both with six points apiece, but they've only had two matches. Uh, Abyss, D'Angelo De Niro, EC3, Adam Cole, and Punishment Martinez, all with three points piece. And then Zima Ion, Chris Hero, both with zero points there. So there you go. There's the... Well, I guess now you're seeing that part. It's not really anything spoiler-wise, like I said there. Kendrick has some morale issues, and we have a couple of broadcasting things coming up that I'm going to be working on. But but there you go. There's our roundup for that. Um, so we've got our, bound for, we've got our, our Destination X card happening. In the next episode, uh, we've got the the three tag matches happening on the show. We have a knockout title match happening on the show. We have an Austin Aries Open Challenge. And we will have some Bound for Glory series matches. More than likely, I'm trying to figure... I'm going to look at it uh, to figure out. But it'll probably be three and three. Just to kind of keep up with my recent schedule stuff so to speak so it'll probably be three men's and three women's matches which will put us up to 11 matches on the pay-per-view which will be pretty good one of those matches one of the bound for glory series matches may get bumped to the pre-show we'll see especially if i end up with like two um not so popular people in the knockouts side of things going up against each other because i will on the men's side i think all of them are at least recognizable but on the women's side, on the knockout side, I think like half of it is all like unimportant talent. So I don't want them to, I don't want to have a match between two unimportant talent on the main show and have it bring down the show a little bit. So um, we'll kind of put it on the pre-show and see what happens. Although I could, I could still do it too. We'll see. Anyway, so expect that to happen uh, in the next episode of TNA here. When that will be, I don't know for sure yet, but that'll uh, be something to look forward to. So thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video.